What's up, Galaxy? It's time for Bantha Soup. I am your host, Gil Garcia. Today in the Bantha Tank, we are taking a look at my Mandalorian collection. Just like you, I love the Mandalorian and I want to show you some figures. This piece, my friends, is a blurg. I have always been looking for a blurg. And we finally got one with the Mission Fleet line. Not only do you get this adorable blurg, but you get this cool little quill that comes with it. Highly detailed, good paint scheme. This blurg has so many points of articulation, like his tail has a little swivel that goes left and right. The arms are amazing due to being on a swivel joint. And the mouth open and closes with a huge jaw of sharp teeth. Each one of these Mission Fleet figures comes with a crazy little missile launcher and it's actually got some pretty good power and the cool thing about the launcher is it's got these little peg holes that you can plug the launcher in on each side of the vehicle or creature so you can put a launcher on the right or left side like i said the articulation on the arms are incredible they move up and down and are on a ball joint that can move so the only thing about mission fleet is these figures are a bit small in scale but they are really kind of close to the three and three quarter inch action figure size. So if you do it right, it actually looks pretty good. Like with this custom three and three quarter inch quill I made for it. Now another really cool thing that Mission Fleet put out was the Mandalorian speeder bike. Now I've got a scout trooper sitting on it and you know what scout troopers were heavy in the Mandalorian so it works but here is the mission fleet speeder bike it actually looks really great that top piece that I put on the top is actually covering one of those peg holes for those crazy missile launchers it comes with but dude the color scheme looks great and it's a nice little speeder bike again it comes with a figure and this time you get the mandalorian in his best car this guy is so cute he's a little small dude with some really awesome weapons the ones we see right in the show he's got a classic pistol and his and the awesome disintegrator rifle most awesome thing about this figure though is that his cape can come off and you can put on the jetpack now there's not a lot of detail in the jetpack it's just that gunmetal gray but it looks awesome on this little mini figure what my idea is i'm going to get me a beater yoda cut the ears off put it on the side of his helmet and then cut his feet off put some yoda feet and make me a little grogu mandalorian speaking of grogu this vehicle comes with grogu's pram yeah, that's right. You get a nice, cool little silver pram that has a clear base that can be removed. You can remove it to give it some live action and connect it back on to stabilize it. It has a half little shield, so it doesn't close all the way, but it does have a, like a half little closing mechanism. It does come with a little Grogu minifigure. There's one point of articulation, just a little ball joint in his head but he is a molded figure and he is holding that little knob from the Razor Crest. The best feature on this bike is the cool little clear plastic piece that connects the pram to the speeder bike. You can connect Grogu to Mando and speed around the galaxy as he wishes. And you know the little baby is safe right behind Mando. I really love that the pram followed the Mandalorian in the show. I really wish they made that kind of live technology for us so we didn't have to constantly watch over our babies. And their prams would just follow us, right? These awesome little playsets are $15 each and they pack a powerful punch. I love these rocket launchers. These are great for any Star Wars fan, but they're also great for adult fans too, because we like to play with toys and have fun. And the best part about it is I got this Mandalorian. This is pre-Beskar, but Oh my gosh, the detail really brings me back to the first season of the show. He's got all the rusted, worn out armor. He looks incredible. Comes with that cape draping over his shoulder. He comes with all the best weapons like his holster. He's got his disintegrator gun. But the coolest part about this figure and the way I'm going to display him on my shelf is on the Mission Fleet speeder bike. Now I said the scale of Mission Fleet is a little smaller than the vintage collection figures but it is really hard to see and when you've got the Mandalorian sitting on this speeder bike 
you really cannot even tell. You can just imagine him zooming through the desert plains of Tatooine, kicking through that desert when you put Quill right next to him. Dude, these look pretty freaking awesome. I Don't get me wrong, I would really love some vintage collection speeder bikes and blurgs, but if this is all we got right now, I'm gonna embrace it, I'm gonna love it, and I'm gonna enjoy it. These are amazing and I'm happy to incorporate them in my vintage collection display. And now one of the hottest figures out there in figure world and in people world, I got a little crust on Gina Carano. It is Cara Dune and I am in love with her character on the show. Such a strong female lead, kicking butt, taking names, doesn't need no help. This girl can handle her own. I love her articulation and I do a full video on her. Check it out. And probably the biggest star of the show, but the smallest star of the show, is little Mr. Grogu. Now this is actually a 6 inch scaled figure, but he looks really good standing next to the 3 and 3 quarter inch action figures. The Scout Trooper is not an official Mandalorian release, but like I said, Scout Troopers are really prominent in the show, so you gotta get yourself a fully articulated vintage collection Scout Trooper. Now this is a piece that I do a full Bantha Soup video on. It is the Imperial Troop Transport. Now this is a piece that I have been after for a very long time. Since the original one came out, I could never get a good price on it, but Vintage Collection made an incredible piece, and this is the one that I really love and adore. Check out my video on it. Yo Hasbro, you listening? Yo Hasbro, I've been after this grief cargo figure for let's say this guy's been on pre-order maybe i got him in january and still nothing still nothing we're about five months in and nothing has happened and it was a freak accident that i found him at target and i was so excited honestly the head sculpt on this grief cargo figure is insane his body sculpt is incredible he has the classic vintage collection joints everything that you would need the hard cloth that's his cape that goes over his body is really awesome i love the yellow color scheme that's on the inside and the black that's on the outside of the cape he's got a really great red suit with some burgundy pants black boots i am so happy with this figure but then along came the armorer, and oh my gosh, guys, this card, figure, the sculpt, the plastic, the smell of it is insane. And this is one of my favorite pieces, and it actually kind of hurts opening it, but I knew I wanted to take her out and display her. Dude, I don't know. It's going to be a hard toss up, but this figure might be my most favorite right now. She has such a medieval, crazy awesome look to her. Like the spikes on her helmet look insane. It reminds me of Darth Maul, but also like this crazy Mandalorian medieval style. She has this amazing like cloth. It's a hard good, it's, it's a piece of plastic pretty much on her back, but it looks like fur and man, it looks incredible. This character was insane in the show. I love her fighting scenes. She really owned it. And I love all the benefits that she gave to the Mandalorian. She is a craftsman and knows how to freaking handle an, a hammer and irons and lava and Beskar and whatever it takes to make Mandalorian armor. But this is probably, I don't know, it's going to be a toss up picking it picking my favorite mandalorian figure out there right now she is pretty incredible right now honestly she's number one right now in my book so she does come with these cool highly detailed little tongs they're basically pliers to i'm sure there's a, a technical name for these things but it's the basically little pliers that she uses to take the metal out of the molting beskar you know you could really use that as a weapon and i think that would be really cool she also comes with her hammer and to me this hammer the handle does seem a little bit thin it's it's like a little toothpick kind of deal 
Now on the figure, she's got two fingers on her hand that are closed a little bit tighter. So it does hold there, but it is a little difficult getting her to hold that hammer. But when you get it on there, she is perfect. Now, when it comes to face sculpting, I don't know if I have ever seen one that looks better than Moff Gideon. Holy cow, the sculpt on this guy's face is the best I've actually ever seen. I know it's hard to capture this actor, but oh my gosh, he looks spot on. This is another one that was very, very hard to open. But Moff Gideon is too sweet to be left in the box and I am so happy I did. Man! The highlight is the face sculpt. I mean, I, dude, that makes the whole figure. But when you look at his body, he has this really cool shiny black outfit on with some red piping that goes around his chest and his waist. He's got all the amazing articulation that the vintage collection three and three quarter inch figure line has to offer from his ankles going left to right, front and back, his knees, his elbows, his head, his neck, everything. This was a figure that was on pre-order for a very long time and it was very well worth the wait. He does come with a dark saber and I think they do it well. You know, the saber is the perfect shape. It's pitch black and one side is painted white to kind of give it that glowing effect. Uh, it looks pretty deadly. Um, it does fit very well in his hands. His hand does have a nice little grip that holds on tight to that sword so no worries if you're playing with them and the freaking sword falling out or you're trying to display them for pictures so that's all good um he does come with his own little blaster and that blaster is actually in there pretty tight they put some good tape on it but it's a you know just a little handgun blaster it's got some good detail on it um it it fits pretty good in his hand i think his right hand does have the trigger finger so I bet the gun fits a lot better in his right hand, but when you put it in his left hand, um, there's really not a lot of space there for him to hold the handle. What is amazing though, he does come with a holster so you can pack that thing right on his side and you have the individually packaged cape that comes with it. And that's the first time I've seen that, I love that. That was a little special attention to detail and packaging to the cape. But it's a black cape and it's got the red underlay on the inside of the cape which is really great so he's got a peg that's on his back and the cape basically fits right in when you put that thing on whoo yeah he looks deadly this guy is ready to go he's got the dark saber he's got a little blaster on his side he is uh ready to take on the mandalorian so uh i would highly recommend this figure one of my favorites right now uh, he doesn't beat the armor just yet but he is uh second right now for me the the detail love this figure all right so these are not official mando releases but they were in the show jawas right oh my gosh that first season with the jawas getting the mudhorn egg for sure this is a pit droid and i love the attention that they've been putting on pit droids especially on tatooine this is a stand-in assassin droid but ig-11 is on order and then my friends the main man with the plan it is the mandalorian in full beskar so i have two versions of the mando one pre-beskar one with beskar another figure that was very hard for me to open I am a diorama guy and this dude has got to be set up in the proper way that he deserves. Now, looking at this guy, holy friggin' Bantha Poodoo! The details on this figure are insane. Man, the color scheme, the mold, the articulation on this figure. Uh, if I had him as a kid, I would mix him in with my G.I. Joe playtime and he would actually own the day every day. He would probably be all I would be thinking about when I was at school. Can't wait to get home to my Mandalorian figure. He's His head has perfect movement. He's got a really great joint on his waist. 
He's got a really cool cape that goes over his shoulder that we all know and also comes with the Mandalorian jetpack. The jetpack does not have a lot of paint articulation to it, but the best thing about this figure is that you can display him with the cape draping over his shoulder with also the Mandalorian jetpack. There's two separate spots to hang both things over and I think it's really freaking cool that you have both display options for the figure and if you want to do both at one time because that's what he's known for that's what you can do thank you hasbro for that he looks like a freaking badass i'm sorry for my verbiage on that but he does look really cool the visor is perfect i love the paint i know we can't use back metalized anymore you can't get those shiny chrome plated figures but you know what it doesn't need to be the the plastic does have a sheen to it and i love that it, it looks so close to the show he's got his classic accessories which includes his amazing pistol handgun that looks very much like an old western revolver just like the kind clint eastwood used to use he's one of my favorite weapons in the entire star wars storyline one of my it means a lot that his main weapon is a revolver type weapon, just a handgun, but that's all he needs to really own the day and do what he needs to do. He, But, you know, of course, the, the showstopper is the disintegrator gun. We heard about that in Empire Strikes Back. No disintegrations. So Mandos are known for it, so he comes with that amazing rifle. And what's cool about this figure um, he does have a little peg hole on his back where you can put his rifle strapped into his belt But the unfortunate thing is you cannot put ah, I guess it was too much wishing you cannot put his cape his jetpack and his revolver all, all on one time So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put both weapons in each hand You know he's gonna have his revolver in his main shooting right hand and he's going to be holding on to his disintegrator gun in his left hand at the ready. Ready to own and do what he's got to do. But the whole point is this guy, just everything that it represents, just the new start of Star Wars, everything the old fans have been wanting, just the mystique, the coolness of this figure, and the playability. And this is not a Mando release, but this might eventually be the Mando ship. It's a slave one. It's prominent in the show. I love all the highlights they gave to this ship. One of my favorite ships of the entire Star Wars story. The Mandalorian TV show means so much to me. I want to thank Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni for bringing my Star Wars back to my adulthood. They really love Star Wars. They really know how to tell stories. They know the visuals, they know the effects, but most important, they know the feeling of Star Wars. They gave us what we original trilogy fans have been wanting for a very long time. Now there is so much great Star Wars that has come after and I love it all from the prequels to the Clone Wars to the Bad Batch. But since the original trilogy, nothing has really checked marked all those Star Wars boxes for me like the Mandalorian does. And what's really disappointing and really sickening is all the social justice drama that the Mandalorian's been experiencing. It just, it feels really gross and I really hate it because we as fans are the ones that are losing out. People are definitely allowed to have their beliefs, but you can't punish one person because you don't agree with them politically. And they all do it. There needs to be consistency and it just needs to stop. The most important thing is Star Wars and good stories. We don't want political agendas. Lucasfilm and we as a people need to learn from our mistakes, forgive, move on, and let's get back to enjoying some quality Star Wars. It's so sad that we're letting this political divide tear us apart 
causing so much anger and frustration in this world that's now bleeding over into the Star Wars universe. When we let those issues seep into our fandom, the only ones that lose are the fans. We miss out on so many great characters, actors, actresses, new potential storylines that could have been amazing, but instead people are fighting. That's never what Star Wars was about. Let's get back to the things we really love about Star Wars. The action, the romance, the love, the camaraderie, the unity. I have spoken and this is the way. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, put a like on our video. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube. Stay up to date on everything. about everything Star Wars. Galaxy, thank you so much for watching. My name is Gil, and this is Bantha Soup.